Welcome back to WCCF Tech TV everyone, it's Keith once again, and today we're going to be digging into Wolfenstein Youngblood, which was published by Bethesda but developed by Machine Gun Games and Arcane Studios. Wolfenstein Youngblood sees us return to an alternate past and assuming the roles of BJ Blazkowicz's two daughters. Well, one at a time with co-op play. This time we're looking at a 100% Vulcan powered game on the id Tech 6 engine that has been gaining popularity since it was able to let the Doom 2016 title soar in frame rates thanks to its post-launch Vulcan patch. That continued to the launch of Wolfenstein the New Colossus but with additional features that added to the load but was still able to deliver great performance across the board. This latest addition to the Wolfenstein saga will be supporting ray tracing at some point at a later date as they're still working on that feature. We'll be revisiting the game when that becomes available to see how the game handles it since the performance of this game already should lend it to be a great candidate for multiple RTX features to be shown off. Our testing methodology has a little bit interesting as testing Wolfenstein Youngblood presents itself a bit of a problem as the game has no built-in benchmarking tool, however that is an easy solution to overcome. It also has quite a few variable settings and we disabled most of them. The area that we took a look at was immediately following the opening Zeppelin mission where you land on the shores of Riverside and follows a path directly to the first waypoint. Passing many instances of multiple light sources, smoke, and fog, as well as firefights as I was consistently shot at the entirety of the way, the results were taken from an average of three runs across this path, and settings were interesting as we had to change things to the ultra preset and then commence disabling all but one of the variable settings, and that was the async compute option. We left that one on. I'm personally not a fan of settings that don't allow at least on and off along with the variable settings as it makes it difficult to nail down performance variables. We also limited the light map anisotropic filtering to by 4 as the Radeon cards were limited to that, but the GeForce cards allowed to go to by 8 We did all the testing on our Z370 system with the Core i9-9900K at 5GHz, 16GB of G-Skill Trident Z RAM at DDR4-3200 CL16 timings, and with the EVGA Z370 Classified K motherboard along the Kingston KC2000 1TB NVMe drive to eliminate stutters that may be presented by storage solutions. All of this was powered by Cooler Master V1200 Platinum Power Supply on Windows 1903 with the latest security patches. Drivers were a bit interesting as we'll kind of dig into that right now. GeForce used 431.60 with no problems. However, in Radeon settings was a little bit different. We did test the majority of the cards, actually all but one, with 19.7.3. However, we did test our latest pickup for the test suite, being the Radeon RX 5700. AMD's latest launch from the Navi series featuring RDNA. The Radeon 19.7.3 driver may be the latest from AMD and claims up to a 13% performance improvement in Wolfenstein Youngblood. And we did use that for all of the Radeon cards except for this one, the Radeon RX 5700, which was wildly unstable with that driver. After multiple DDU and driver reinstall sessions, we were still met with near instant crashes when running the game, and that would result in a black screen where it would then eventually recover and the GPU core would be locked to its peak boost clock and running at 99% load despite there not being any actual load on the card. I reached out to several other people who had access to Navi cards and this title as well, and they were, well, able to replicate the issue, showing that it was not isolated in my system. In an effort to have the 5700 series included in the results we tested with the previous 19.7.2 drivers and found to be perfectly stable, albeit with a recurring lighting artifact during the opening Zeppelin mission, and it's a bit worried. But if the RX 5700 series performance seems a little bit odd or lower than you expected, this is why. Now one of the things that we do in our testing is test preset scaling at 4K. Now testing this performance is a good way to see how the game scales by simply adjusting presets rather than individual settings for a quick idea. When we did all of our testing on screen, you can see that this is a title that scales up generally in performance when you drop the preset scaling. Wolfenstein Youngblood has a very modest curve in FPS reduction as you move down the preset scaling showing improvement as you reduce settings. Not so much that it's concerning, but it does show the potential to boost setup's performance just by well, adjusting the preset to hit the target frame rate that you're hoping for without sacrificing too much eye candy. Going past Ultra shows very little change, which is why we use that as the point for our testing. 
Now we do like to take a moment and test core scaling with the 9900K and while this test doesn't tell us how specifically how many cores and threads the game will use, it can show us how the game performs as you move up in cores and threads available to the system. These were tested at 1080p with the settings that we tested the rest of the results with and paired with an RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition. And Wolfenstein Youngblood, we clearly see a consistent repeat of what we've been seeing in games recently. We're scaling up to six cores is good, but past that point, there's little benefit, but it does increase the 0.1% lows, showing that it helps smooth out the systems from impacts in background tasks and windows itself. This is a good showing of leveraging more modern multi-core processors, despite what user bench might think. Now, as we move into the resolution results here, we're gonna show you, we're gonna let those go across the screen as we go into the conclusion. Now, if you wanna pause it and take a look at each one of these, that's perfectly fine. Or if you'd rather follow the link down in the description so that you can see the 1% and 0.1% lows of each card and each resolution to really see where they land in performance. Now, in the end, we see a fairly consistent story of what id Tech 6 is and has shown as well as performs all the way up through UHD 4K resolutions. There are a few caveats this time around with the baseline requirement being pushed up in terms of VRAM as you'll notice the RX 574 GB suffers and the game even had a warning regarding running out of VRAM even at 1080p with the settings that we use. Now the average frame rate of the RX 570 shows that if you tweak the settings a bit you'll be able to play just fine at a variety of resolutions with that card. Navi stability is unfortunate but appears to be isolated to the latest driver intended for the game which is odd but with others having stability issues in this game with their RX 5700 series GPUs perhaps a new driver will be released soon and for now I would recommend rolling back to 19.7.2 and potentially giving up a little bit of performance in lieu of stability. GeForce parts are an interesting picture here as this is one where Turing cards simply walk away from the Pascal generation. In our review of the RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti, we mentioned that the advances in design, specifically with the handling of asynchronous compute, would lend to the Turing architecture to begin distancing itself as we move forward, and if this game is anything to go by, then Doom Eternal should be a real treat for Turing owners. It's just too bad that ray tracing features weren't available at the time to test, as there appears to be a lot of wiggle room for the RTX cards to be able to take a frame rate hit and deliver some fresh effects. Well guys, if you've been playing this game, let us know down in the comment section what, below what you think about the performance and the game itself. Do you, are you enjoying it? Are you having fun? Love to know, know that. Anyway, this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you and the next one.